So in the second video, I'm going to answer the question, which really reply, um, but it was Thomas Toesland who made the point. Uh, I wonder if there are particular architecture types that are best for different jobs. For example, if we're talking about supercomputers, maybe some, uh, an array of ARM chip may be better than, than x86, or other architectures like Spark MIPS, um, although x86, 64 is what's used on Windows. Now, so it's, we're kind of in an unusual, we have been in an unusual phase since the turn of the century, um, the last maybe 10 or so years, that really um, Intel chips, x86 chips, uh, have dominated the market. Prior to that, in the 90s, there was a whole range of of, of um, um, architectures of, of CPU ch chips used in supercomputing. You've mentioned a couple there, Spark and MIPS, and there there were others. But now, actually, um, ARM um, has come back into the market. Now, ARM chips are designed for very, very low power, and so they're fantastic for things like mobile phones and portable devices. But they historically didn't have particularly good performance. So people tried to use these low power ARM chips for supercomputing and although they produced, although they produced very low power supercomputers, the performance wasn't really good enough. And so you needed too many CPU cores to get reasonable performance. Recently, the ARM64 architecture has come out and ARM is actually a, a company that makes designs processors and chips, they don't build them. A number of people have started to build the, these computers um, um, computers out of these, these chips and people are building supercomputers out of ARM chips. Now, actually they're not particularly low power, but the interest for us is that there's another manufacturer there. So now there's going to be some competition. And so actually in the UK, uh, there is a national service called Isambard, um, which is built out of ARM64 processors. And there's um, three systems going in, uh, slightly lower power, but also um, parallel computers built out of ARM64 processors, EPC is going to have one. It's called the Catalyst system. And so, yes, um, ARM chips, uh, there, there is a diversity of architectures and, it, and, and what people will do when there is a choice of architecture, of, of CPU, people will, you know, when, when they're about to buy a supercomputer, will just run, ask the manufacturers to run standard benchmarks on different processors and see which is the fastest. You also mentioned uh, graphics cards, GPUs. Yes, we touch on them later on in the course. And GPUs do offer extremely high performance. Um, and again, they're pretty cost effective because there's a large market out there uh, for gaming and also more recently for artificial intelligence, deep learning applications. So there's a big market out there. So there's a, there's a price performance. There, 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 there's a, you know, economies of scale. So we can buy these GPUs quite cheaply. Currently, um, it's quite a lot of work to port an application to GPU because it's a slightly different programming model. It's not MPI. It's, you can start to be able to program with OpenMP, but you do, you do need to rewrite your program, possibly using something like OpenMP, or most people have been using something called a language called CUDA. So there's a lot of effort to make your application run on these processors. However, if you can port your application to make use of GPUs, then they're very, very effective. And so, you know, I, I, I talked in the first video how communities are based around um, community codes where a few people write the program, write the application, the parallel program, and a large number of people use it. If you know if that program has been ported, uh, application has been ported to GPUs, then then it will probably then it may run very well on on that um, on that target architecture. So I think that you know um, the most important thing to say is that you know the fact that there's re only really been one. Um, dominant CPU in the market for a long time. The Intel architecture is slightly unusual historically, but we're entering a new phase, which is going back to what it used to be like, where we have a choice of, of CPUs here. We have ARM CPUs and, um, and, and, and now, uh, as well as the Intel CPUs and, and AMD are also bringing out their own, their own CPU called Epic, um, which, which will be interesting. And also we have these graphics processors which we can use. And so things are opening up and that's good for diversity, it's good for competition, it's good for taking the field forward. So it is a very, very exciting time in supercomputing, uh, both from the size of the machines entering the exascale, exascale era with, with large numbers of CPU cores, but also um, the type of CPU cores we're gonna be using is going to be give us more choice and more flexibility.